إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم All praise is due to Allah Praise that is befitting His Majesty The Ever Living I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah The one who never sleeps his veil is light, such that if it were lifted, the vision of the onlooker would be set ablaze. And may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad, who fulfilled the trust placed on him and showed the path to guidance to those who were lost. And peace be upon all of those who follow him and eagerly seek his way of life until the last hour. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Welcome, my honored brothers and sisters in Islam. I ask Allah, who has gathered us at this blessed hour, on this blessed day, in His obedience, to gather us with the Prophet Muhammad on the Day of Judgment, with his family and companions in the gardens and rivers of paradise. Join me tonight in the first in a series of programs dedicated to two noble personalities in the history of Islam called Jesus and Maryam in the Noble Qur'an. I hope that the chastity and modesty of Maryam and the piety and devotion of Jesus, the son of Maryam, will be an inspiration for our youth. These are qualities that our sons and daughters are in great need of today. I ask Allah Most High and Powerful to make it beneficial to the Ummah and forgive my shortcomings. We begin with Allah's name and seek His help. But before we narrate their stories, let me relate some precious words from the eminent Egyptian scholar, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan. He mentions that there is no present for an Ummah that is ignorant of their past and there is no future for those who forget their character their noble traits and characteristics and if we were to remember the history of our past if we were to remember it only to cry over lost grandeur then it would only bring regret and sorrow we live in an age when the models of piety have become few and far between. And yet at the same time, the people of evil, singers and dancers, have been presented to our youth as models to emulate. Those who oppose Islam try to obstruct our connection to our history by putting between us and it various obstacles so that this ummah cannot gain from it light to guide our way or to drink from its blessed water the blessed water of our history so that we may gain life anew this noble past is a life-giving spring for our youth which they wish to sever from us so that our new generation cannot learn of the blood and sacrifice they gave for our religion pure blessed blood that can flow through our arteries and rejuvenate our collective body. All nations boast of their past. They sing praises about their sons and celebrate them. But the most worthy nation of being honored and proud is the nation of the Mukhtar, the chosen Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the witness of Allah, for Allah said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf you are the best nation sent forth for mankind. You command to good and forbid evil and believe in Allah. However, this chosen status that Allah called us the best nation, it is not intrinsic. It is conditional 
that we must fulfill these conditions. We must call to good and forbid evil and call people to believe in Allah alone, Tawheed in Allah. Yet goodness will remain within our ummah forever since we have been honored with a noble task of conveying Allah's message of unity to the ends of the earth. Our noble prophet, peace be upon him, was sent for all of humanity, for everyone, for all of the worlds. As Allah has said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And our history will remain a glowing light till the ends of time. In this series, we're going to hear about a unique and honorable woman. It is truly an auspicious occasion. I present it to the world with honor and delight, and I say to the whole world, this is Islam, this is what Muhammad wasallam teaches. I present a luminous example, a shining light, a picture that shows the tolerance and understanding of Islam so that the world can hear tonight the words of its Lord, the words of its Prophet, for he is indeed the Prophet for all of mankind. We will journey to a bygone era, the era of Prophets, to, re to relive the story of a noble woman, virgin, a pure, chaste, and pious, devout worshiper. We will journey through the verses of the Qur'an to discover a woman who Allah has selected from all of the women of the earth to place within her womb a secret, a most pure person. She is a lady that no woman of the earth can ever reach in rank. She is the chaste virgin whom Allah blew into from his spirit. She is the most unique mother in the world of motherhood. She was given a magnificent miracle we have tonight a meeting with a woman who is the mother of one of the noble messengers of Allah, of strong will. She is a lady who Allah has honored through mention in 34 different places in the Qur'an, more than any other woman. And more than this, she is a woman after whom Allah has named an entire chapter in the Qur'an. She is a fortress of faith, a spring of piety, she is Maryam, the mother of Isa, the daughter of Imran. Let the world know how the Qur'an honors Maryam, and let the world know how Prophet Muhammad honored Maryam. I will begin tonight with the words of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about Maryam, alayhi salam. The truthful Prophet mentioned in a hadith narrated by Bukhari, that many men reached perfection in faith, but none from women reached absolute perfection in faith except four. Maryam, the daughter of Imran, and Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, and Khadija, the daughter of Khuwaylid, and Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad. Look how Prophet Muhammad honored Maryam. She's mentioned first and these four perfect women of the earth. Also, the Prophet Muhammad said in a hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, the best woman of her time was Maryam, and the best woman of the Prophet's time was Khadija. O people of the earth who indict the pearl of prophethood, who accuse Islam of extremism and terrorism, here is Muhammad's reverence for Maryam. And in a narration related by Imam Ahmad, the Prophet ﷺ was once with his companions and he drew four lines on the earth. And he said to his companions, do you know what these lines are? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, these lines are the four perfect women in Jannah. These lines are the four of the best women of Paradise. They are Khadija, Fatima, Maryam, and Asiya. May peace be upon them. So Maryam is one of the foremost women in Paradise. 
As you know, the Prophet also mentioned that every baby that is born cries. And this is because the shaitan, the devil, has touched the baby. Yet, he said there are two that did not cry when they were born. The Prophet Muhammad said in a hadith narrated by Bukhari that these two who were never touched by the devil were Maryam and her son. Abu Huraira, he narrated this hadith and he said, read this verse if you like. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى وَاللَّهُ أَعْنَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ when baby Maryam was delivered, her mother said, O oh Lord, behold, I am delivered a female child. And Allah knew best what she brought forth. And no wise is the male like the female. I have named her Maryam, and I commend her and her offspring to your protection from the evil and rejected one. And so you see, the mother of Maryam she called on Allah to protect her daughter from the evil of the devil and from all of her child's progeny. And thus, Maryam and her son, Isa, were not touched by the devil. Inshallah, next time we'll continue with more on the life of Maryam's mother. But before that, I would like to explain uh, why we say that Maryam called on Allah instead of using the word God. Because unfortunately, many non-Muslims, they believe that Allah is a God or a deity that was worshipped by Prophet Muhammad and by the Muslims. And he is not the God of Maryam and Jesus. However, the word Allah actually refers to the one true God of all of the prophets, of Adam and Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. The word Allah is the cognate, the linguistic cognate of the word Eloh that appears in the Bible. The word that Jesus used to call on his Lord. And thus, the word is actually closer to the, or it's actually more authentic or more accurate because Allah does not have a female form or a plural form like the word God has in English. Allah is the proper name for Allah. Allah is the proper name for the one God of the universe. In fact, all the people of Arabia, the Jews, the Christians, and the pagans, they referred to Allah, they referred to God, the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, as Allah. And this is why the Prophet's father, who passed away before the Prophet Muhammad was born, was named Abdullah, the servant of Allah. And also we know the chief rabbi of Medina, Abdullah ibn Salam. He was named Abdullah by his Jewish parents, the servant of Allah. And thus, this word Allah is the most close and accurate word to the creator of the universe. Prophet Muhammad, he called all the people, Jews and Christians, to return to Allah, to the straight path of Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. I ask that Allah help us to follow in his footsteps and make us keys to goodness and locks of evil. It looks like we're almost out of time. Inshallah, we'll continue next time with more on the life of Maryam and her mother. And I hope you join us for Isa and Maryam in the Noble Qur'an. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.